Hi, my name is Paul from Physics High, and today I would like to examine Module 7, The Nature of Light, and in particular, the first inquiry question, which deals with what is light? And a quick reminder that anything that I produce here will be available in a principal version, and the link is in the description below. Now, this module is divided up into four inquiry questions. The first one is looking at what is light? The second inquiry question says what evidence supports the wave model of light and what predictions can be made using this model? In essence, we're interested in the wave model. The next question says what evidence supports the particle model of light and what are the implications of this evidence for the development of the quantum model of light? In essence, we are interested in what we refer to as the particle model. And finally, we're looking at consequences. The question that is asked, how does the behavior of light affect the concepts of time, space, and matter? In essence, we're dealing with the concept of relativity. Now let's examine our first inquiry question, what is light? And there are three key areas that I want to examine. The first aspect is looking at the work of Maxwell. We then look specifically at the determination of the speed of light. And then the last aspect we look at is the concept of spectroscopy. Now, in terms of Maxwell, it was his work in unifying, and that's the key word here, unifying electric field theory and magnetic field theory as established by Faraday a number of years beforehand, that he established the relationship between, the interrelationship, in other words, he unified those two theories into what we now call as this electromagnetic theory. And that led to two predictions. And the first prediction, of course, is that the electric and magnetic fields propagate in, in terms of waves. So what we have is this idea of these waves being generated. And as a result of all this, he also predicted that they travel at a certain speed and it ended up being the value of C, which is the speed of light. So you need to be familiar of what Maxwell actually did in terms of his work. But out of that course becomes the aspect of what is an electromagnetic wave? In other words, you need to be familiar with the nature of what electromagnetic wave is. It's a transverse wave of a propagating electric field and magnetic field perpendicular to each other. And he determined that the speed of this interaction between electricity and magnetism or electromagnetism travels at the speed of light. So that light actually becomes a form of electromagnetic radiation. The next aspect is the determination of C. Now the determination of C is done in two fashions, one sense. And the first aspect is to understand that we have an historical analysis and a contemporary analysis. Now historically, the speed of light is determined one of two ways. One is astronomical and the other is time of flight. And so you need to know that throughout history, our determination of the speed of light got more and more precise. Now, astronomical, we're looking at the work of Ola Roma and Bradley. Time of flight, we're looking at the work of Fuseau and Foucault. The syllabus doesn't specifically mention those scientists, but you need to know the methodologies that are used to determine, historically at least, the speed of light. And we got more and more precise. And it was these values here that Maxwell recognized was, well, that electromagnetic wave is much the, the value of the uh, speed of light. And so light was a form of electromagnetic radiation. And that led to those predictions being tested by the work of Heinrich Hertz with his work on radio waves. But what about contemporary? Well, contemporary, we have the work of Essen in the 1940s, which used standing waves to determine a more precise value of the speed of light. But critically, what I want you to remember is the fact that the speed of light is no longer actually experimentally determined. It is now set. And so from 1983 onwards, the speed of light is now this value meters per second. And that is actually the value that is set. And we now define various uh, other units based on that particular value. And that's the key thing you need to remember in the syllabus context is that the speed of light now becomes the standard for other units. Lastly, we look at spectroscopy. And you need to know, first of all, 
is the different things that we need to, we can analyze that by the use of spectroscopy. And so we have what we refer to as a continuous spectrum, an absorption spectrum, and an emission spectrum from things such as a continuous light source, such as reflected sunlight, but also discharge tubes, which give only specific frequency. So therefore it's an emission spectrum. And where light passes through a gas, for example, such as stellar analysis, you'll have an absorption spectrum. So you need to be familiar with the concept of spectroscopy and then also it's uses so its definitions what we have but then also its uses in other words by examining spectroscopy uh, let's say particularly of stars we can show that they are moving translationally or rotationally we can look at their chemical composition we can also look at their density uh, and so forth so in other words we can use spectral analysis of light of electromagnetic radiation in order to understand some properties of the body that is obviously emitting the light. Well, I hope that it helps you understand this particular inquiry question and as it fits in the other inquiry questions within this particular module. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. Put a comment down below if this has been helpful for you. And please consider supporting me by buying me a coffee. The link is in the description below. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care and bye for now.